on. Hi everybody, my name is Ian, and today we're going to be talking about antiangina agents. First, what is antiangina and what does it mean? Angina predators refers to the pain that the heart feels when the myocardial cells do not receive enough oxygen during either strenuous activity or even at rest. It is worth noting that the myocardial cells of the heart do not have pain receptors, but they feel this pain when a substance called substance P is released. This pain is primarily felt in the patient's chest and left arm. Sometimes the pain radiates upwards through the neck into the jaw and even can feel it in their teeth sometimes. This manifests due to fat deposits and plaque buildup that occurs in our, car in our arteries due to atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or ASCVD. As time passes, this disease can lead to a diagnosis of coronary artery disease, which as we know is incurable and can lead to other harmful effects to your body, such as hypertension, myocardial infarction, or otherwise known as heart, heart attack, and complete heart failure. Here is some pictures that describe or illustrate the plaque, uh, plaque buildup. As you can see in uh, the picture A, we have uh, the plaque building up right here. This is a before picture. In picture B, we can see that the vessel actually forms around it, and this is the damage that it can cause and what leads to our vessels losing its elasticity and which makes it a permanent disease. So there are three current types of angina. There are stable angina, unstable angina, and Prinz metal, otherwise known as variant angina. Stable angina is pain or blood restriction that is relieved when the patient stops the activity that they're doing and takes a rest. Unstable angina is pain that occurs when restriction happens and pain and they are in rest and the pain does not stop. It is unpredictable and happens at any time and again, does not stop at rest. Prince metal or variant angina is an interesting case where there's, it doesn't occur from plaque buildup, but instead of a vasospasms that happen in the arteries that restricts the blood flow, as you can see in the picture illustrated above. So how do we treat angina? First, we do not treat stable angina, we only treat unstable angina. So when the patient is resting and they still feel this pain, then we'll prescribe them anti-anginal agents. How, the point of anti-anginal agents is to restore the supply-demand ratio of the oxygen delivery to the heart. And this is done by two ways vasodilation, which increases blood flow to the heart, and decreasing the cardiac workload of the heart, which will, in a sense, lower the amount of oxygen needed for the body. There are four major, cli major classifications of this. First, we get our nitrates. Th these are usually the very first thing, and probably the strongest uh, agents we have for this disease. They are a vasodilator that is used directly on smooth muscles to relax them and decrease muscle tone and increase the blood flow throughout the body. Then we got beta blockers, which block the beta adrenergic receptors, decreasing the effects of the sympathetic nervous system. And will then decrease our cardiac workload. Then we've got calcium channel blockers, which inhibit the movement of calcium across the membrane and myocardial and artery arterial muscle cells, altering the action potential and blocking muscle contraction of the heart. Finally, we've got hyperazine acetamide. These are an interesting type of anti-anginal agents. First, we do not know their complete mechanisms of action, and second, we really do not know if they have anti-anginal effects. We do know that they inhibit late sodium influx, which decreases myocardial workflow. And due to this, 
and we're not, this usually not, this is a combination. We use it with, we usually prescribe it with nitrates or beta blockers, never on itself. So we try to go for the combination effect that this drug can cause. So what are some nursing assessments we must take in consideration before we prescribe these? Before we must, we must confirm that he, the patient is suffering from coronary artery disease, which as we, can, as we talked about, can cause us angina pain. We can do this by having the patient take some ECG scans or by having to have, them have a stress test. Then we must also teach them the correct ways to use these medications. So you can tell the medication's working if the pain of the patient is feeling is feeling relieved after three to five minutes after administration. It is worth noting that you can take up to medications three times within this five minute, after five minutes of each other, but once that hits that third time and you are not feeling any relief, immediately stop what you're doing and call 911 because you may have a very serious event going on with your life. Then, Another thing we must do is, once we you have taken them, you must be able to find a way to watch your blood pressure and heart rate to ensure your safety, because these are going to essentially slow, blood, slow your blood flow down and just lower your heart rate, and it could become dangerous. So, nursing considerations. Like we said, must have a baseline assessment, and we also must find any other metal, medical underlying medical issues and things such as head trauma, allergies, anemia, and pregnancies could not only ruin the effect that these drugs have, but they can cause, have serious side effects that can be life-threatening and could potentially ruin and destroy the fetus. Like we mentioned, blood pressure and heart rate monitoring, we must make sure that there is a way we can that you can monitor your heart rate and blood pressure in order to make sure you are not feeling any, in order to make sure that all levels are good and that you're still being able to function properly. You must know the effect that it has on other body systems. For instance, it's, it has an effect on our sympathetic nervous system and, it could, and that could cause other problems such as diarrhea and nausea and other gastrointestinal problems. If we lower the effects that the CNS has, we're more than likely going to be constipated and have other problems. It's just, it's just a fact. And then we need to have, we need to assess the patient's changes of activities of daily living. There's a reason why they're, they have these problems. It's because they haven't been taking care of their body. They haven't been exercising. Their diet is not the best. They must have changed these in order to have the best effect. They, they can't just rely on these drugs to make their life better. They have to change their life in order to have the best effect. So, let's say you're, a nur you're nursing and you're dealing with a patient that is having angina pain, whether it's in the chest, arm, or up in their neck and teeth. Just remember to stay calm and remember the mnemonic MOAN. What does MOAN mean? The M stands for morphine. Administer morphine to over in order to increase the patient's breathing level and up the respirations. O stands for oxygen. Give the patient an oxygen mask or a nasal cannula to ensure that the body is getting enough oxygen throughout itself. A, aspirin. Aspirin is known to thin the blood and it will decrease blood pressure and it will allow the blood to perfuse faster. And finally, go to our, one of our nitrates. Those are usually our first line of defense when in the hospital when it comes to angina pain. Give, that, give the patient a prescribed nitrate and help dilate the blood vessels and decrease the workload of the heart and that will help, hopefully help relieve the pain. So if you remember MOAN, just M-O-A-N and we should all be good. Thank you so much for watching my video. Uh, hopefully this was very helpful.